Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to FizzWiz. So in the previous tutorial, I showed you guys how to calculate the adsorption energy of the H2O molecule on top of the LiH001 surface. And we actually got a value of um, a negative 321 milli electron volts. And in our convention, a negative value indicated that the adsorption was favorable. And however, the problem was that this value was quite different compared to the reference value that we were trying to reproduce in this paper and uh, this reference value was of 215 milli electron volts. Now um, you don't need to worry about the signs here since I got a negative signs because I followed a different convention as I already mentioned in my previous tutorial and in the convention followed in this particular paper a positive value is equivalent to a negative value. So ignore the signs for the moment but the magnitudes uh, being different is the real problem and in my previous tutorial I mentioned that this difference was due to something called the basis set superposition error now what is this basis set superposition error so um, to explain it very briefly uh, one can say that when we run a calculation on the total H2O plus LiH system what happens is that the H2O molecule is able to access additional basis functions centered on the LiH atoms when they are near to it, resulting in slight extra stabilization. And when we run a calculation on the isolated H2O molecule, then we only use the basis function centered on the H2O molecule. And this inconsistent treatment of the H2O molecule when we run a calculation on the total system as well as when we run a calculation on the isolated molecule due to the lack of additional basis functions that were present in the total system we get this basis set superposition error however if we had a complete basis set if we were in the complete basis set limit then we won't have this error but yes since um, we are not there so we get this basis set superposition error which results in slight overstabilization and that is why our adsorption energy value, that is the magnitude, is slightly higher compared to the reference value. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to calculate the adsorption energy such that it is free from this basis at superposition error. And to do that, um, the procedure is actually really simple. So what you will do is, just like before, uh, you will run a standard total system calculation. Um, without any changes just like before so we'll just use the energy value that we obtained um, from our previous simula simulation uh, in the previous tutorial however when we run the calculation on the components that is when we run the calculation to obtain the energy of the H2 isolated molecule as well as when we run the calculation to obtain the energy of the isolated LiH periodic surface then what we are going to do is we are going to use the basis functions of the entire system and this is also something that is referred to as a super molecular basis in literature so we are going to use a super molecular basis to expand the orbitals or the densities of the H2O molecule so that um, we will be using the basis functions of the L centered on the LiH atoms as well and similarly when we run the calculation on the LiH surface we will use the basis function centered on the H2O molecule as well so we will be using a supermolecular basis for both the calculations and what essentially um, that means is that we will be using cost functions so this is again a very popular term um, known in literature where you employ these cost functions or on the cost atoms of your um, second component so yeah so essentially that is how you get rid of the um, basis at superposition error. So now if you calculate the energy of the isolated H2 molecule as well as the LiH surface using a supermolecular basis with cost functions, then if you use this formula, the adsorption energy that you get would be free of the basis at superposition error. So enough of chit chat. Now let's start computing. So come back to your terminal. Now, if you remember from the previous tutorial, by the way, the link to the previous tutorial is down below if you want to have a look at it and yeah. So 
we had these three directories. So this was the for the total system, this was for the isolated molecule, this was for the isolated surface. Now let's create another directory for BSS E corrected, that is basis set superposition error corrected, adsorption energy, and we don't really need to redo this calculation as I already mentioned, but we need to redo these two calculations using a supermolecular basis. So let's go ahead and, you know, since we'll be using the total uh, system spaces, we should also have the structure of the total system. So what we are going to do is we are going to copy the total system directory into the BSSE directory and um, rename it to like H2O because an H2 super or something. So this will be uh, for a super molecular basis calculation of H2O. So let's just go ahead and do that and then go into the BSSE directory and then H2O super directory. So now we will get rid of these ripper files. So we'll get rid of, you know, these uh, four files over here. And now let's have a look at our code. So the code file will remain essentially the same because uh, we want to use the basis function centered on all the atoms and therefore we need their coordinates. However, now what we are going to do is in order to run the calculation for only H2 molecule, we need to set the charges on the remaining atoms to be zero. And that way the charge on the atoms would be zero, but their basis functions will still be used. So that is why these are referred to as the ghost atoms or ghost basis functions. So let's run define again and come to this section about basis charges and hit yes as I want to change it. Now let's assign the charge of all the LIH atoms. And since the first three atoms are for H2O, so we start from four and the total number of atoms in our system is 131. So let's set the charge of atoms uh, with indices 4 to 131 to be zero and hit enter. And it says that it is supplying charges to 128 atoms. So that worked. Now let's just um, go ahead to the next menu, keep the universal basis and um, assign a new initial guess. And yeah, so that is basically it. Now we can exit define and run our calculation of the H2 molecule using a supermolecular basis. Before I do that, let me set the number of cores to be used for the calculations to 32 and run the calculation. Now let's see um, how is it running. So, okay, so it is running now and you can see that this time the um, Ah, sorry, I made one mistake actually. So as you can see that we are using periodic boundary conditions, but for the H2 molecule, we shouldn't be using periodic boundary conditions. So let me go ahead and kill this calculation right now and open our control file again and get rid of all the periodicity related stuff. So all this stuff I will get rid of. And also in the control file, if you now have a look, you will see that the charges of you know all the li and h atoms have been set to zero anyway so again let's get rid of these uh, ripper files and run the calculation again okay so now if i open the output file i see that it is now using all the atomic coordinates but the charges of only the first three atoms corresponding to the H2 molecule are non-zero, the remaining are zero. And the basis number of basis functions is now much more compared to our previous case because now we are using the basis function centered on the total system. So this calculation will uh, convert pretty quickly. In the meantime, let's go ahead and also try to run a calculation on the LIH uh, surface using a super system basis. So again, we will copy the um, Okay, so the calculation is already complete now. So, okay, so nonetheless, we will copy the total systems uh, calculation directory and paste it uh, with the name LIH super. Okay, so now we will move into this LIH super directory. And once again, we'll get rid of these ripper files. And um, yeah, so again, um, 
this time we want to set the charges of only the first three atoms to be zero because this is a calculation for the LIH surface so the charges of the LIH shouldn't be zero so once again we will run define and we will change the charges of the first three atoms to be zero and you will see that it has supplied charge to three atoms so it worked now we will uh, just press k to keep the universal basis and assign an initial guess just some random stuff okay and now again we are uh, good to run the calculation for the LIA surface using a super molecular basis now in the meanwhile while this uh, calculation is running what we are going to do is we are going to copy the energy of the H2 molecule in the super system or the super molecular basis so uh, we'll go ahead and copy this energy and previously this was our calculation of the absorption energy so this was the energy of the total system this was the energy of the isolated water molecule and this was the energy of the isolated Li surface so this time we will replace this energy of the isolated water molecule with our new energy uh, in the supermolecular basis and similarly we will also try to see the energy of the LIH uh, surface in the supermolecular basis but this calculation is still running so um, in the meanwhile what I can do is I can tell you that I will put the link of this uh, really nice article on basis superposition error in the description down below you can also check out my Twitter thread on this um, I will also put a link to it in the description down below and by the way this procedure that we are following to get rid of the basis at superposition error is actually called counterpoise correction so we are simply applying this counterpoise correction to obtain the BSSE correct adsorption energies and actually Turbomol also has its own utility to um, compute BSSE corrected energies but um, for the Ripper module I found this procedure also to be really simple so but yeah in the future I will probably create another tutorial on the BSSE script or, or like how to use that BSSE script in the future so let's see how far we are in this calculation so it is still going to take some time so I'm going to pause the tutorial right now and come back when this calculation is complete okay so the calculation is now complete so let's check it out so it took around 3 minutes and 43 seconds and this is the energy of the LIH surface using a super molecular basis as you can see in the atomic coordinates on top over here that the uh, even the um, basis functions or the um, basis function center or the H2O molecule were also used so let's come back to our calculation and put the or paste in the energy of the LIH surface using a super molecular basis hit enter and this is our basis set superposition error corrected absorption energy in atomic units now let's come back to this uh, web app and convert it into electron volts and you see that we get a value of 214 or if you round it off then 215 milli electron volts which is basically the same as, as the value reported in this literature so as I mentioned that we will be able to reproduce this reference value if we incorporate the B BSSE correction and you can see that we are able to reproduce it exactly never mind the uh, sign differences in our convention a negative sign is equivalent to their positive sign so I hope you guys really found this tutorial as well as my previous tutorial on the calculation of adsorption energy is really useful in case you did then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this if you have any questions or doubts you can leave them in the comment section down below thanks for watching and have a great day Thank you